Good to be with you guys again, Pastor Ray here. If you haven't had a chance and you're watching these videos, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, make sure you get those notifications when we put new content out literally every day for you. Uh, our uh, verses for today is from the book of Philippians. We're going to finish chapter 1 now. So we'll be at verses 27 and we'll finish up at verse 30. And now I want to read it all since it's just a couple of verses. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Oh, that's so good. So that whatever I come and see you, or I am absent, that I may hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit. Once again, Paul is at his favorite church in, this, uh, in the Philippian church, and he's like, I want you guys united, united. How many churches have you been a part of, or even a part of like right now, where you're like, I don't sense unity within this body? Um, or within this church, or within a church I had in the past. That, that is not the mark of what a Christian church should be and look like. It should be united together. But it has to be united together under the correct Jesus and the correct gospel. Amen? All right, so, uh, that I may see you in absent, that I may hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. That's, that's what our mission is, right? Standing side by side in this unity for the gospel. And not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, that you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Uh, lots going on here, and for the sake of our devotion, don't necessarily have a chance to literally go through everything, but there is one thing in here that really kind of stands out to me, but it's, it's, it doesn't really stand out to us a whole lot. I mean, we could read our whole Bible and we can catch this theme that I just read about and, and miss it. Um, it wasn't long ago that my family and I, this was before COVID, we got to go on this uh, tremendous vacation that uh, my wife Sarah uh, put together for us where we would go to Glacier and then we went to, the Yellow, uh, went to Yellowstone and then we went to the uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming and the Grand Tetons and it was wonderful. In fact, this is where I got this this shirt, and I love wearing it because this literally was one of my favorite places uh, to be at on, on that vacation. Um, and Wyoming was just gorgeous and beautiful. And so I remember being in the shop, I'm like, I got to get this sweater. And it was a killer deal. It was $5. And uh, when I saw it was $5, I'm like, we got to just like buy the whole rack. And Sarah's like, you can't wear that shirt. I'm like, well, why not? It looks great, doesn't it? And I know you're watching on video and you're thinking, it looks great on you, Ray. Great color. Uh, she goes, Wyoming is spelled wrong. <laughs> I said, what? No, it's not. And then, of course, I looked down at it and I go, oh, no, it is. And that's why it was $5. It was a misprint. So it was, it's right there in front of your eyes. You could see it. And it just didn't process. It just didn't connect. I saw it and, and it didn't process. And there's many times in the scriptures we will see a constant theme hitting us. It's there, but you don't see it. And especially in the American church. There is something that is in every, almost every book of the Bible, God is so clearly teaching us, and it's about suffering. And we live in a time where the charismatic side of, quote unquote, the Christian church will say that if you have enough faith, um, if you plant your seed properly, if you do certain aspects or give to certain people, you won't suffer. And like suffering is not a part of this. And in fact, God doesn't even want you to suffer. His goal is for you to live your best life now, and you just have to do X, Y, and Z to get there, and you'll never suffer again. And, and friends, that, that is just a lie. That is not from scriptures. And what they do is they, they pull these health, wealth, and, and you know, prosperity type verses out of context. And if you just read your Bible and we just see there, there's a sobering reality that no matter where we're at in this life, we're living in a sin-cursed body in a sin-cursed world. God has been very clear. He's very upfront. In our lifetimes, in our, in our world, even now, today, and even in Bible times, that there will be suffering. Suffering is built into the plan of God and how he sanctifies us and makes us more like Christ. Paul is suffering. He's going to the Philippian church, and even here, he's saying, hey, even if you have enemies, you're, you guys are gospel-centered. Even if your enemies come at you uh, and, and you're even scared of them, and they're setting you up for destruction, Listen, that it has been granted to you, this is verse 29, that for the sake of Christ, that you should not only believe in him, believe in Christ, but also suffer for his sake. Why is suffering so powerful? When you and I 
um, go through suffering or when you and I go through trials, it really is a great moment in the life of our life and in the lives of those around us when they see us suffering to see are we living in such a way and do we have such a joy and such a love for Christ in such a way that we trust Him even in the midst of suffering that we can show ourselves to be faithful to Christ. And that's hard to do when you're suffering, is it not? And it's hard for the world to understand that when somebody is going through suffering that they still love God and they don't believe God's evil and they don't believe God's doing them wrong and they don't believe that God's punishing them. But in fact, they're going, no, God brought this suffering on this trial on in my life so I could show forth how great he still is in the midst of the suffering. And I'll tell you, friends, like that wrecks people in a good way. How in the world can you have such joy and still have that smile on your face and still be faithful to God in the midst of your suffering? And that's where you get that opportunity and I get that opportunity, the curiosity of the unbeliever to go, let me tell you about Christ. Let me tell you about who he is, how good he is. Let me tell you about the hope of heaven that I'll never be in this suffering one day. Let me tell you about a sin-cursed world and a sin-cursed body and what Christ has done through the, through the cross and the forgiveness of sin. So it just paves the way for that. So suffering builds us up, but man, it is one of the greatest evangelistic tools that God uses in our lives in this world. So let's not let our suffering go to waste. Let us glorify God in and through it. Until we meet again, guys, God bless you.